Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jackie and I'm a self-taught software engineer based in London and today I have a different type of video for you. So since I had some more free time this week because of the bank holidays, I thought I would prepare a little coding project that I could do for the video. So today's video is actually sponsored by FrontEgg. FrontEgg is a platform that allows us to integrate user management infrastructure into our own applications and systems quite easily and it abstracts pretty much everything related to user management and makes it super user friendly for the developers to implement it into their own systems. So since I'm collaborating with FrontEgg on this video, I thought it would be interesting to use their API and integrate the user management bit into an application that I'm going to build. I did some research into like possible projects that I could do for this video and I decided that I would do a React app because I haven't coded any front end in a year and a half, maybe longer. So far, in terms of front end frameworks and libraries, I've only used Angular and React. And I have to say, I do like React better, but I am a bit biased. And then I thought, but what's like the functionality of this app? And then I realized I've never worked with WebSockets before. I decided that I would build a super simple chat application where two people could create accounts using front egg and then chat with each other. So that's what the project's gonna be about. So I already did some dev prep for the video, but we're gonna do the main parts together. And yeah, just try to get this app up and running. Before we get started, I need to address this. I bought some books. So I could maybe quickly do a book haul. Oh God. <laughs> These are heavy. If you're not new to this channel, you know that I really like reading. Since I'm now living in my big girl apartment and I have this big bookshelf over here, I thought I would buy a few technical books so I can put them on display and I can read them. I mean, I love Kindle, don't get me wrong. Kindle is just so practical. You can carry hundreds of books with you wherever you go. It's not like <laughs> carrying this around. Anyway, but with technical books, I think it's so convenient to have the actual physical book in your hands because you can highlight stuff, you can take notes, and I just think that it's a more immersive experience. So that's why I decided to get all of these. So we have Pet First Design Pattern, then we have Building Microservices by Sam Newman, then we have Clean Architecture by Uncle Bob, Robert C. Martin. Quite excited to read this one. And then I have two books about system design interview. Now, I'm not really preparing for interviews right now to be honest but I found these on Amazon and they have a few examples like concrete examples of certain systems and how the architecture diagram could look like potentially for these use cases and I think there are many books that you know go very in deep into uh, different design patterns in terms of architecture and like the trade-offs and everything but sometimes they lack very concrete examples and I just thought that it would be interesting to go through all of these examples and these books and see what a potential architecture could look like for each of these types of systems. So I'm gonna get myself a coffee and then we're gonna sit down at my desk and start coding this app. Let's get started. We are gonna build a React chat app and we're gonna use FrontX user management infrastructure so that users can create accounts and then chat with each other on the platform. Now, one of the good things about FrontEgg is that they kind of abstract the whole user management implementation and it makes it really easy to add it to our own apps. So if we access their website, we can see that this is kind of how their user interface looks like. Uh, it looks super neat and super simple in my opinion. And yeah, it basically just makes it super easy to integrate all of the user management infrastructure into our own applications in a way that's already like secure and scalable and performance wise it's quite fast. So when we integrate front egg we get this portal where we can personalize our own sign up and sign in forms and we can play around with different settings for example the authentication flow if we want it with the password or passwordless and then we can also select the social logins that we want our application to support. And then we can also customize uh, the sign-in and sign-up forms a bit so that it's more on-brand for our own applications. With FrontEgg, we also get a self-served admin portal where we can check the users that have signed up to our website. The API is quite flexible, so we can like adapt this to different types of applications in different types of use cases. And obviously, user management is not just signing up to an application. There's a lot of different things that go into it. So for example, we have sign in and sign on, uh, you know, there's always some type of verification. So either a user has to verify the email address or something like that. 
then there is multi-factor authentication, there is forgot your password and reset your password, there is SSO, social logins, logging in, for example, with other providers such as Google or GitHub or LinkedIn. And on top of everything, we need to make sure that this is all scalable and secure and that it complies with the laws. So Frontech is quite easy to integrate into our own application and they have an open source SDK. This is their documentation, so it has all the details on how to add Frontech to our own application, different hosting environments, so we can have like development, beta, production, etc. They have an API as well, so we can use it to integrate with the backends. The documentation is quite comprehensive and it has all of the examples. So for more advanced use cases, we can also manage roles and permissions. Let's check how it works for React. So let's start by creating an account. I'm going to do it with one of my Google accounts. As company name, we're going to say it's Jackie Chat. Now we can do some tailoring. I like this. I think it looks cute. Now we can choose how the users can sign up. So I'm going to pick Google and GitHub. Now we can pick our security features. I think we're good with multi-factor authentication. So this is what the page looks like. We can customize it a bit here, use different themes. I think they all look quite nice, but I'm gonna go with the modern design. We can change the colors of the buttons and the inputs. We can increase the font size. Let's see. And now we're gonna test this integration. What's your tech stack? So our tech stack is React, and we're gonna set it up on the local host in the dev environment. Sounds good. So in order to move forward, we will have to integrate front egg with our React application. Let's follow this guide. First step, we need to create a React app. Actually, I'm gonna create a directory for the app and then we're gonna create a folder for the front end. And I'm gonna call it front end. So for this project in particular, we're going to use JavaScript, which is the default language that we use for React applications. If you're building a more complex project or if you're building a project where you will be interacting a lot with other developers, I would highly recommend to use TypeScript instead of JavaScript. The next step is to install the front egg React library. So let's do that. So that's done. So the next step is the configuration. And here we want to add the front egg provider and wrap it around our application in React. So here's the code snippet that shows us how to do that. This would be the index.js file in our React app. And basically what we need to add is this import so that we have the front egg provider and then we need to wrap it around our app. In addition, we also need to pass in the base URL and the client ID. But we can do this once we have this builder login box implemented and our environment set up. So let's do that first. And we want to wrap it around our app. So let's go further. Okay, and now we need to pass in our context stops. And I'm going to take the ones from the example for now. Pass it in here. And they also put in a flag of posted login box equals true. So let's do that as well. So Frontech provides us use of book, which we can use to check whether a user is authenticated um, from the user management side. So if he is authenticated, we probably want to redirect him to our chat application. Otherwise, if he's not yet logged in, then we want to redirect him to the login page. I'm going to take this page as it is and replace it with the default React. It comes with Create React app. I'm going to get rid of this. Give it a try. Okay, so let's run our application and then start. Oh, my back hurts. Okay, so it rendered, uh, looking good on the server side, click me to login, and it redirects us to front egg. 
but this is the default just so we can activate it, I guess. So as you can see, it changed over here at the top. So we are integrated now, awesome. And now we have a development environment. So here we have our accounts. Here we have our users. So this is where the chat app users will show up. We have activity logs where we can see who's going to log in and log out. Then we have rules and permissions over here. So this is probably an overkill for this simple example that we're building, but it can be useful for other use cases, I guess. Okay, so now we need to log in. Let me get my authentication code. And we logged in. It worked. By the way, my GitHub profile pic is from the movie The Breakfast Club. So now that we are integrated with FrontEgg, I'm going to go ahead and create a chat box in React. So yesterday, while I was doing some prep for the project, I saw a few examples of chat messages and uh, how people usually design them and style them. So I'm going to put a few things together. I'm also going to add linting to the project just so that it's easier to format everything properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so a little update here. I've been working on the components of the chat app. So I did prepare this beforehand. I prepared a CSS um, sheet for our chat box styling. I got some ideas from existing projects on GitHub. So we need to get started on the backend. Let's create a folder for that. So I did some research and socket.io seems to be a good library to use to build simple chat applications. So socket.io is basically a bidirectional and low latency communication library. So WebSocket is the communication protocol uh, which we use in order to provide like a constant open connection between client and server to exchange data. And because we have this constantly open connection, in the end, it ends up being faster than if we do HTTP requests. So when we use HTTP, the client needs to request the server for data, and then the server needs to respond with the data. When we use WebSockets as the communication protocol, this exchange is faster because the client doesn't need to ask the server for information. It is directly sent to the client. So this is what makes WebSockets good for chat platforms. So I started writing the server code, I put it on port 5000. I saw this example online where people were using an express server together with socket.io, so that's what I'm doing here as well. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is that there will be a chat room and any user who knows the name of the chat room can join it. And then I just have the app listening on the port. But I'm not sure if this works, I need to test this. So I think I found the issue, but let's see if it works now. It's not recognizing my user, which is suspicious. I signed up again with a different email address. So now I have two different users which can communicate through my application. So let's call the room besties. Yay. So I'm going to log in with the other one as well. What's up? We just built a React app. Yay! I will upload this project to GitHub so you guys can check the source code if you're interested. The link will be in the description box. I had a lot of fun building this app, but it did take me way longer than I was expecting. The least painful part of this project was integrating the user management with FrontEgg. So big shout out to FrontEgg for making the process so simple and easy and for abstracting it so well for us developers. I had a lot of fun building this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!